this is Caroline and uh, for those of you participating in the Perfect Garden Project, I wanted to show you the very first kimono that I've made. Um, it's in honor of Nancy Dunaway's memories of her uh, garden from her grandmother and her mother. So it's a garden of memories. And this particular kimono became really kind of a uh, a, a, a journey into fantasy and wonder. I'm going to take you up close. This is the front side. Um, this is her Nana's home. And in front of Nancy's Nana's home, or in back, was a brick wall where there was a, uh, a, a pond or a water feature with koi. And I don't know that there were roses, but I put roses on the garden wall. As you can see, the word Arkansas has been rubbed. And that is from plaques in Jamestown, Virginia, where each state of the Union is, is honored with a plaque with information about when it became a, United, a member of the United States of America. The uh, sleeves are rubbings from uh, Budapest, which, as it so happens, the color, the texture, and everything about that made sense. The binding on the uh, bottom of the sleeves um, is uh, green with with a sort of photo lighted um, uh, um, vegetation, like leaves and uh, things like clover. Anyway, so we start out with this mimosa tree, which Nancy mentioned was a part of her grandmother's uh, garden. And there's this bluebird that you'll notice, and of course, many butterflies. The bluebird is a result of Nancy's artwork, which she contributed to this project. This bluebird is not Nancy's artwork. It is my tracing of her blue of her bird, which I then created into a bluebird on the tree. And looking up at the bluebird is a little girl with blonde hair and a cocker spaniel. Nancy always loved dogs. I know at one time she had a Cocker Spaniel. She is surrounded by gardenias, by zinnias, and yellow alyssum. And then here we go down to flagstones that she mentioned. And there is a yellow ribbon that uh, traces a path from those uh, flagstones to go around the mimosa tree. Um, sort of an homage to that wonderful old-fashioned um, song, tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree, if you're still waiting for me. Here is another uh, water element. It's a pond with goldfish, uh, aka koi. Um, and as you see here is Nancy's original artwork. I did enhance the bird, just so you could see it. Um, she gave me permission to use her artwork directly onto the kimono. Here, there was a round element, and I know Nancy loves to work with uh, natural dyes and rust and things like that. And I just thought it made a wonderful little door to the fairy realm. Nancy mentioned that she always believed there had to be real fairies living in her grandmother's garden. And there are a couple of fairies uh, flying around. Here is one with gigantic golden antenna. More rocks. Rocks are something that Nancy developed a love of early in her life and throughout her life would collect rocks wherever we went. Now there is a blue racer snake uh, you'll also see on the rocks um, a green garden snake and then these frogs leaping across the bottom of the kimono. 
all of them are expressing joy uh, and sort of wonder and the whole sort of experience of being thrilled to be out of doors like a little girl would feel in her Nana's garden. On the back, I'm gonna take you to the back now. Um, we've got the mimosa tree in the autumn. The autumn, the mimosa tree puts out these amazing pods, okay, which are quite large and have big seeds in them. Um, so I thought the pods would be a wonderful addition to the autumn experience of the garden in her grandmother's backyard. And you see this is the back view of the mimosa tree. Here is uh, another uh, replication of Nancy's artwork, only this time the bird is on the bottom. I photographed it, digitized it, and then replicated it on um, washi, can washi paper. Here are Nancy's wonderful smooth fairy stones with a luna moth. Many luna moths are around this time of year, um, hanging around the mimosa tree, very attracted to the tree. Luna moths are huge and beautiful. And um, fortunately in Virginia, we also have luna moths. They're one of my personal favorites. The frogs at uh, twilight, because this is a twilight experience of the garden, um, are actually dancing. And you can see several frogs looking on as the frog have a jamboree and a dance. And the white fence, of course, has clematis growing on it. And in back of this silver frog right here is a fig tree with a gigantic um, luna moth hanging about in it. So, and here's another wonderful frog who is meditating like a Buddha. Okay, so that is the back. The, the substrate or the paper is a beautiful, um, it's actually a cotton lokta paper uh, made in Nepal and it's marbled with greens and yellows and uh, some silver, you see. And that's the substrate on the back and the front of the kimono. All of this uh, paper are papers from various countries, either Japan uh, or Nepal, as you can see here. This is Kinwashi, that's Japan. This is another uh, beautiful paper from India. They are now making their papers. These are a row of trees against another fence uh, with various cut up um, stenciled Japanese papers called Shigo Yami or Shiyo Gami. Okay. And the leaves of the mimosa tree are once again yet another kind of special paper. Um, all kinds, various kinds. The uh, paper in the back is a banana uh, paper. Once again, that interesting paper with the sort of photosynthesis work here of the cloves and clovers and the Budapest rubbing for the sleeves. So here are the Budapest rubbings of a utility cover in downtown Budapest. So that is the back of Nancy's um, wonderful kimono, which I call her memory. It's a memory kimono um, featuring wonderful fairies, frogs, luna moths, and bluebirds. So thank you to Nancy for giving me these ideas, for writing a wonderful description about her experiences of wonder, which no doubt fired her imagination and helped really and truly form Nancy's soul, which is the soul of an artist. Bye, you guys. I look forward 
to hearing from you about your gardens as well.